Morgan Hurd grabbed the mic and delivered an impassioned speech to hundreds of mass protesters at a Stop Asian Hate rally in New York City. This has been a defining year for the 2017 World All Around Champion from Delaware. Yes, 2021 dealt a devastating blow to Morgan Hurd's Olympic aspirations when she didn't qualify for trials. But more troubling for her is that the last year has given way to a troubling rise in anti-Asian and Pacific Islander hate and violence. Begin with yet another anti-Asian attack. And as Morgan will tell you, racism in America doesn't care that you're a world champion. Grew up with the same jokes, which are really actually racist remarks, like Ching Chong. And as the pandemic unleashed a surge of anti-Asian xenophobia and racism across the country, Morgan was on the receiving end of some of that. The past year I was in Philadelphia for a protest, I think in October or something, and I was walking down the street and someone, um, it was, I had a headphone in because I was on the phone with one of my friends, but all I could hear was like someone screaming at me for being Chinese. But it also pushed her to take an active role in dismantling racism in America. Morgan has been using her social media platforms to call for action in the face of police killings of unarmed black and brown people, the rise in Asian hate, food insecurity, gun violence, the list goes on. It's no exaggeration to say every other tweet she posts advocates fighting for social justice. I have been blessed with this platform and I really don't want to let it go to waste and I am a big believer in there are power in numbers. But she's been careful to be more than just a keyboard warrior. Last year, after the death of George Floyd, she started going to Black Lives Matter protests, then women's rights rallies, voting rights rallies, and then stop Asian hate protest. And then in April, she spoke at a rally. The mimicking of our small eyes, which ironically is now a trend. I also like to practice what I preach. I try my hardest to get out there and do my part, not only that, but in everyday life too. If I, if I see some type of remark or if someone I know even makes that kind of any remarks that I just completely disagree with, I will call them out on it. I'm not just going to stay silent because I believe that silence is compliance. But it was something another speaker at an anti-Asian hate rally said that really resonated with Morgan. You could just hear the emotion in her voice. She started off with a beautiful poem. When you looked at my face and shied away from my gaze, people were terrified in 2020 of my mask and two eyes. I've never heard emotion like this. It really shook me to my core. You should regard me by my Asian persuasion. I remind us that we're all part of one nation. That's Alice Soy, a teacher, activist, and speaker at one of these Stop Asian Hate rallies that blew Morgan away. Alice shared a few stories during her speech that confirm what a lot of us already know, that racism is taught and learned at a young age, even in New York City, one of the most diverse cities in America. In February last year, when I was walking upstairs in school, a fifth grader stopped me and said, Miss Alice, someone said you had coronavirus. And I found out it was another one of my fifth grade students who I had taught for many years. This week, a fourth grader called me China to my face. But in those moments, I could feel my extreme rage, not at the children, but at the systems of our world that have led my students to say this. Yes, that moment is deeply upsetting, but it's what happens next that is important. And it goes back to something Morgan took away from Alice Soy's speech. Here's what Morgan said. You have to call out when people are in the wrong and they try to brush things off like that as just a joke, even no matter how small it is, because that's how it becomes normalized. So this is what Alice did. I addressed it immediately um, with the entire fifth grade afterwards. And I talked about how it's very hurtful for me to hear that. And not everything that you hear on the media and in news or just around you is true. And it's always important to question who's saying that, who's telling the story and what isn't being shared. It's concrete steps like this one, a hard to have conversation with a room full of nine and 10 year olds that can change people's racist actions or at least make them think twice about them. When that student called Soy China, another student's gut reaction was to do this. There was a kid who actually called out in that moment, that's racist. And at first I didn't really even know how to respond, but the next day I, I showed my appreciation because yeah, that was racist to say. What that student did, be actively anti-racist, 
is what Morgan thinks we all need to be doing. And it requires being more than just an ally. This doesn't just fall on the Asian community either. Allies, we love and appreciate you, but stop just being allies and start being accomplices. Don't be an ally, be an accomplice. Being an ally is just kind of sitting back, observing, yes, I support you, but I'm not gonna do anything about it. You have to be an accomplice. You have to be out there having those uncomfortable conversations. You have to call out when people are in the wrong and they try to brush things off like that as just a joke. Morgan has her own accomplice and her best friend, Heath Thorpe, a white gymnast from Australia. He says the last year has taught him how to be a better accomplice. Firstly, listening and being open to listening because often I think at least I found as a white person, a lot of my perspectives were challenged initially with these conversations. And here's probably the hardest, but most necessary part of being an accomplice. Having those conversations with my family and friends when they say something hurtful, trying to help them understand why it is hurtful. And yeah, I guess making sure that I keep that same energy in my everyday life as I do on social media and taking it past performative activism and actually doing something. Morgan Hurd's gymnastics career has given her a world stage and a megaphone to go with it. The last year has given her incredible pain, but also a cause to fight for. But it hasn't come without conflicting emotions for the adoptee from China who remembers nothing of her eight months in her birth country. I, don't, I barely know anything about the culture, the country, the language. Um, so it's made me like kind of struggle, like, am I really a part of that community, I may look like them, but I don't have like the same culture sense as them. But after going to this rally, I really just, I was there and I just honestly felt so at home and I felt that sense of community. So yes, Morgan Heard will continue speaking out and Morgan Heard will be heard. You cannot blame an entire race and place the blame for the government's inadequate and incompetent response to COVID-19. Yeah. 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 Yeah.